Tonight, we are still uncovering details of what went down in Jersey City on Tuesday. Today, New Jersey Attorney General Gabir Graywall gave new information on the suspects. David Anderson and Francine Graham were also the prime suspects in a Bayonne murder Saturday night. Graywall says 34-year-old Michael Rumberger was found beaten to death in the trunk of a car. The AG also clarified the timeline of the mayhem in Jersey City and said the investigation is continuing. He said Detective Joseph Seals was shot and killed by Anderson and Graham at Bayview Cemetery around noon. The two then stole a U-Haul van and drove to the J.C. Kosher Supermarket on MLK Junior Drive, where three civilians were murdered before cops took down the two shooters. The killers are reported to be connected with the Black Hebrew Israelites, a known anti-Semitic organization. Police also removed what they described as a possible incendiary device from the U-Haul van. Now let's get right to our reporter, Monica Guy, who has more on the victims. It is a warm community, a community that's inclusive, a community that's tolerant, um, and you know, this is uh, the type of thing that if somebody has a deliberate intent to harm somebody else, as was the case here, it's very, very difficult to police around that. Um, I think the JCPD did, did an extraordinary job. Jersey City Mayor Stephen Phillips stood in solidarity with community faith leaders and members of the city council, expressing their support for the victims and the families of those impacted by that deadly shooting at the JC Kosher supermarket. The mayor didn't mince words about what's being investigated as the motive for the killings. There is no question that this is a hate crime and anti-Semitism should be called out aggressively and firmly immediately for what it is. When you look, look at the facts of what transpired yesterday, it's difficult to argue anything other than that. Earlier, Israel's ambassador and Governor Phil Murphy visited the site and then joined a prayer service in a religious building next to the supermarket. It's the same place where as many as 60 children were receiving Jewish religious instruction when the shooting happened. Shell casings and bullet holes now mark that building along with others surrounding it, including the Sacred Heart School, which is across the street. 24-year-old Moshe Deutsch and 33-year-old Mindel Farrens, along with 49-year-old Miguel Douglas, were fatally shot in the store. Deutsch and Farrens were members of the Satmar Jewish sect. Their leader, Rabbi David Niederman, knew them well and echoed the mayor's sentiments. The very, very special young man studied and the spare time what he did was trying to help others. Very involved in the community. The answer is very clear. There's some bad apples and there are people who live on hatred. People who thrive on that. And one should understand that hate against one community is also hate against other communities as well. And we all have to work together to root that out. In keeping with Orthodox Jewish traditions, funerals for Deutsch and Farrens were Wednesday night. NYPD members provided additional security support during the services. In Jersey City, I'm Monica Guy. Thank you, Monica. As authorities investigate Tuesday's events in Jersey City as an anti-Semitic hate crime, many are asking what can be done to stem behavior that leads to such horrific acts of violence. Joining me now, the executive director of the USC Shoah Foundation, the organization founded by director Steven Spielberg after he filmed Oscar-winning Schindler's List. The foundation's mission to build empathy, understanding, and respect to counter anti-Semitism and other forms of hatred. Stephen Smith, welcome to Chasing News. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Our reporter was on scene Tuesday as the gun battle took place. She heard members of the community cheering as shots rang out and heard one woman talking about how much she hates the Jews and saying, quote, they are slumlords. Unfortunately, statements like this aren't a local problem. They're made everywhere. Let me ask you something, Doc. Sometimes we hear things like this that are out of context. This was literally in the aftermath of a brutal murder scene. Anti-Semitism has its roots deeply embedded within our culture and within the way in which we talk. This goes back in history a long way. And what we have to do, we have to look right inside our society, inside our culture and say, how are we gonna turn this around? Because these are lies, but they're also part of our, part of our cultural environment and we have to stop this. How much of this do you think can be attributed to the gentrification of an area where you've got natural racial tensions, where people feel they're being moved out? What's happening is, in our homes, we're perpetuating these stereotypes, which means then children take it to school, they get 
perpetuated in the playground at school. And then it gets brought into college. And the next thing we know, it becomes politicized. And then we take it into our professional lives. If we get and start this younger um, and start to, to talk to young people about how they value every other person around them, then I think we might start a virtuous cycle rather than a vicious cycle of hatred that we've seen. President Trump had an action today, executive order clarifying the 1964 Civil Rights Act. Where do you think this can be helpful? Because he's addressing college campuses specifically, so you're talking about young people. I am actually um, very welcoming of the fact that we have a political move that's been taken by the president to make clear that this is not acceptable on our campuses anywhere at any time. Doc, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Law enforcement personnel and many of us still heartbroken over the murder of Jersey City Detective Joseph Seals. Nate Rogers caught up with the officer's pastor after Father Mike Donovan prayed with the family earlier today. Bill, Detective Seals grew up in Bayonne, but for the last several years has resided with his family in North Arlington. Now, as his community continues to mourn, flags are now at half staff here in North Arlington. A purple and black bunting also draped over Borough Hall. Officers guarded Seals' home all day Wednesday as his family asked for privacy. The father of five was known to neighbors as active, loving, and hardworking. When I find out later on, that up. It's a neighbor, my heart went. How do we heal from this? I don't know. It's it's hard. It's sad. It's it's too much violence going on right now. I, <sighs> I, they should do something about their guns. That's what I think. The Seals family attends Queen of Peace Church along River Road. Pastor Mike Donovan met with Seals' children today. Donovan recalled how proud Seals was when his youngest daughter was baptized nearly a year ago. You could tell how proud he was uh, to be in church, having his daughter receive the sacraments, and just being part of a growing family. The 13-year veteran was assigned to JCPD's ceasefire unit, removing illegal guns off the street. He was promoted to detective in 2006. As investigators work on the case, Father Donovan encouraged Seal's family to keep praying. Obviously, they're not going to understand what took place it's terrible. It can't be justified, but at least they have a family, and you could tell they were a very, very close family. Now, funeral arrangements are still pending. A GoFundMe account has raised more than $100,000 for Seal's family. The New Jersey State PBA has warned people to beware of fake GoFundMe pages. In New York, I'm Nate Rogers for Chasing News.